Welcome to Virginia's Garden. I consider myself an artist who paints with her garden. The brush is my body and the colours on my brush are the plants and objects I place around my garden. There is no need to paint the sky because God has painted that with his brush for me and it changes every day. My life is so filled with the presence of God once again that I am inspired to share him through my garden. I hope you enjoy the adventure of discovering God afresh like I did again in 2008. I am seeking to convey something of that experience in the significant places garden walk that you see before you now. I have nine in total. First is Jenny's Garden Corner. The second is Jesus of Nazareth. Third is Peter's Vineyard. Four is Noel's Wash. Five, the Door Vegetable Patch. Six, the Woman of Samaria. Seven is God's Cleanup. Eight is New Jerusalem Chickens. And nine is Jacob's Well. Gardens are very special places where we feel peaceful and restful. It's difficult to explain why this happens when we walk in a garden, but it is my belief that deep down in our subconscious minds and deep in our soul, we are longing to hear and feel God's presence and walk with God again like Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. All artists have a story to tell. I convey that perfection doesn't exist now, but one day it will when Jesus comes a second time. I'm happy to admit I am a gardener who deals with imperfection and it's through nurturing and caring and using the tools I have at my disposal that I modify the canvas on which I paint when I plant and move objects around my garden, very much like what God has done in my life. Unlike painting a picture with paints, my canvas, the garden, is alive and changes every day. A big challenge indeed. The heavens truly declare the glory of God, but it's in my garden that one can walk with God. I have nine significant places in my garden that are very special to me that you will visit today. They have been designed to assist you in quiet reflection upon who God is and what he has revealed about himself and Jesus. Some of the stories I express at the significant places garden walk, seem to develop into something new at each new garden opening, like the new Jerusalem chickens and the door vegetable patch, very similar to what the biblical story of redemption has done in the Bible, and these were all revealed in my garden in the opening of 2015. It might seem strange creating an open garden with a biblical theme, but I have come to realise people are looking in many places for things missing in their life, like peace and joy and eternal life. All can be found by searching and reading your Bible and coming into a right relationship with God through Jesus. I encourage you to read your Bible. The Bible is clear. To obtain a peace that is lasting, a joy that is never-ending, is only obtainable by being in a right standing with God. Unfortunately, no man has a right standing in God's eyes. Romans 3, 19 and 20 and Isaiah 64, 6 explain this. But that's not where the Bible leaves it. A way has been provided so we can stand before God without fear. It's by believing that Jesus died for our sins and that he rose again so that we, not him, might have a new life. All we have to do is believe and accept these truths. If we say we haven't sinned, we are not telling the truth. Everyone has committed some sort of sin, no matter how small it is. It is still big enough to separate you from God's presence. The Bible's solution to man's and the world's problems can be resolved by the solution the Bible provides which is knowing Jesus and receiving him and his work by faith. Jesus is God's solution, and he is really the only one that brings life and life abundantly. I hope you know him. Having Jesus in your life 
and nothing else, is the source of forgiveness of sin, life, peace, joy, and all that is good in this life, and also for the good life to come upon death. Trust Jesus now. He leads to all these blessings. The Bible shows there are no second chances after death to accept Jesus to give you eternal life. It must be done before death. Do you think you are good enough to stand in your own righteousness before God? Perhaps you've told yourself God doesn't exist. Well, he does. Design in the heavens and in all of creation provides God's existence. That's the eternal witness to God. Hebrews 9.27 says, It's appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. What I find fascinating about encounters Jesus had with men and women of different walks of life in the Bible is that he knew what each needed to do to place God first in their lives. He knew each individual sin, and that was very different for each man and woman he met. For you and me, this is important to know and understand. If Jesus knew that about people then, he would certainly know ours as he meets us today. Let us listen to what he tells us about ourselves. What he tells each of us will be very different because we are all very unique and God knows this. One thing remains the same for all. We all need forgiveness of sins that we've committed and only Jesus' death on the cross provides that. Jesus is the truth and Jesus is the life and no one, absolutely no one, comes to God but by trusting Jesus. This will always remain unchanged. There are not many ways to God. The Bible shows only one way, Jesus. These were the words of Jesus himself. Read them. John 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. With the religious leaders of his day, Jesus challenged their religious rules on how to get to God. With others, Jesus showed they needed to give up their love of money. With others, they needed to stop adultery or stop lying and cheating. It didn't matter what sin they were involved in. When they came to Jesus or he came to them, they could be guaranteed to have discovered how to obtain eternal life because they faced the essence of life himself, Jesus and he addressed their shortfalls, which is sin. It's no different today for you and me. Jesus knows what we need to do to obtain eternal life. He knows our shortfalls, our sins. Will we trust him? Will we look to him to obtain that eternal life and accept the forgiveness he offers us for our shortfalls, which is sin? The Bible shows some people didn't listen and follow Jesus, such as the young ruler in Mark 10, 17 to 24. Seeking eternal life, peace and joy are all good things to seek, but there is a cost to pay, and it's different for each individual and yet the same, which is we must accept Jesus as our Saviour from our own sin. God expects nothing less and accepts nothing more. In the book of Genesis, God walked with man in the Garden of Eden. God looked for man after he sinned. It's no different today. Man is still hiding and God is still searching. Man continues to seek peace with God by replacing the emptiness inside with power, money, greed, adultery, covetousness, slander and even murder. Don't hide. Nothing can reinstate peace like a right relationship with God. God needs to replace our fig leaves with the garments Jesus gave us at the cross, garments that are pure and holy and peaceful. The attraction to walk in a garden 
and the peace it brings when we do is us trying to locate God because I believe God does walk in gardens today. He is there bringing peace to our troubled souls but we must come out of hiding and address our sin with him through Jesus. I pray as you walk through my garden that God gives you grace to accept the forgiveness he extends to you in his son Jesus. I pray you experience God afresh in your life also, if you have already done that. That peace will then come into your life. Jesus heals broken relationships we had with God and others at, at the cross which sin caused. I accepted and believed this when I asked Jesus into my heart to be my saviour when I was 20 in March 1977. I hope you will do the same. I hope also as you walk in my garden today that you too come away thrilled like I have knowing that the Bible is telling us that God loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for our sins so that we don't need to hide anymore. Jesus has paid the penalty for our sin and he rose from the dead too and we have been raised with him in newness of life. Are you prepared to believe this? I have. The Bible shows that without Jesus as our Saviour, God's wrath abides on us for our sins. That's why we are troubled and have no lasting peace. Accept Jesus as your Saviour today if you haven't already. God will not argue you into accepting or forcing you into having or believing in Jesus as your Saviour. God will just present him as your Saviour. You can't buy Jesus and you can't earn Jesus. Jesus is a free gift for all who believe in him. Jesus himself said that if you don't believe in me, the wrath of God abides on you. That's John 3.36. These are Jesus' words, not mine. If Jesus is God, and I believe that he is, then we better take what he says seriously. Learn what God has done for you at the cross of Calvary. Read your Bible and believe in Jesus as your Saviour. I have. If you feel after you have been for a walk in my garden, you would like to have that presence of God that I speak about, then I've prepared a simple prayer to help you. You can pray this one or similar. The important thing is that you want God in your life and you see the need of having Jesus as your saviour. Otherwise, it just won't work. Oh God, I need you in my life. I ask that you forgive me for my sins. I know I'm not a good person. I need Jesus to come into my life. I don't understand all there is to know, but I know I need you and all that Jesus has done for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Fill your life with the things of God. Read your Bible, pray and seek out fellow Christian believers to share your experience with. And most important of all, keep your eyes on Jesus. I am. I've been doing that for nearly 45 years now. Jesus be with you. Sincerely, Virginia. I hope you enjoyed the walk in Virginia's garden today.